That was painful. It takes a lot of confidence away from you when you brake and the, the car doesn't stop. Okay, Lewis, let us know you're okay. Lewis, just a Yeah, I'm okay. Oh, um, something uh, hit the brakes and some, the brakes failed. I hit the wall pretty hard and, and actually the seat twisted and I damaged my, uh, one of the vertebrae in my low back. And um, yeah, Germany was tough. His mindset and his mental strengths grew throughout the season and he got better and better of overcoming those difficult moments. Lewis Hamilton all the way back in 20th place on the grid as he looks to try and make his way through the order. Right at the front is his teammate Nico Rosberg. Lights out, away we go, and Rosberg gets off the line very well. Magnussen, oh, he's hit! He's hit Massa, Massa's over! Flicks back over again. Hamilton is now trying to pick his way through the order. Well, that was certainly a brief move. I actually really enjoy coming through. It's almost more satisfying than winning the race. Raikkonen and Hamilton both going for it. Locked up, he's hit Raikkonen. How did they get away with that? And Lewis Hamilton surely needs to be a little bit wary here. He needs to be thinking about the long game here. I didn't mean to hit Jensen. Button. Oh, there's a little bit of contact again. Front wing. It looked like he was letting me by. I was like, oh, what a nice guy. <laughs> he came back in. That was my front wing. I thought he was letting me pass. Well, Hamilton has got past Alonso now, so he's into third place. I almost felt like I had one, coming from dead last to, to third. Nico Rosberg wins the German Grand Prix for Mercedes. Yes! <laughs> yes, thank you! Winning my home race, well, it's uh, very special. Only the second driver or something since 1930s to have won in a German car, German driver, home race in Germany. Great day for me. Nico Rosberg's opened the gap to 14 points in the championship, and Hamilton will definitely be out for revenge. I knew this weekend I've got to bounce back. I know I'm quick, I've got an extra few tents in my pocket, so when I need to bring it out, I'm going to bring it out and I'm going to get pole. Fire on Hamilton. Then all of a sudden, looking at my mirrors, I've got flames coming out. I'm like, no. Oh, for f sake. Stop, jump out, jump out. And I just remember standing there looking at the car and seeing Nika kept coming past. And like, oh my, this, this guy's car never stops. <laughs> Look at the slow walk of disappointment. It's the sixth pole position of the year for Nico Rosberg. Yeah, there's lots of things going through my mind. It's getting to the point that it's kind of beyond bad luck now, so we need to do better. Rothberg gets off the line. Hamilton waiting in the pits to start this race. Hamilton's gone off. He's joined from the pit lane. He's gone straight off down at turn two. Oh my God, that was horrible. I was not happy with myself there. But then to come through, you know, real serious damage limitations. Big accident for Marcus Ericsson in the cage room. Everybody will be gathered up behind safety car. Do we see some pit stops? Hamilton, unsurprisingly, has come in. All of those who stayed out are now heading in. And Rosberg is going to lose out as a result of this. And now Rosberg's under pressure from Alonso. Alonso goes through, and there's only one car between Rosberg and Hamilton. Would you believe it? Vettel here being chased by Hamilton. Oh, the Vettel! Vettel has spun, but he's not hit anything. Rosberg rejoins, and now we're going to see him really put the hammer down. Okay, Lewis, gap to Nico, one second. He's on the option tie. He has one more stop, so don't hold him up. Why is he not letting me through? Okay, Lewis, if you let Nico pass this lap, please. Let Nico pass on the main start finish straight. Yeah, that's never something you want to hear. I think that's a tough call by the team. I'm sorry, they are racing. Hungry. We did what we discussed. It was clear that if a driver would run on a different strategy and he would have to have one stop more to do, then the guy in front would make his life difficult. People will have opinions about that. Um, I think for me it was just, I was really not expecting it. And then to hear that after what I've just been through, you know, Nico started on pole. Okay, the safety car caught him out, but 
that's not as bad as starting from the pit lane and going off hitting the wall and coming back through all these people. There was suddenly much more in the equation than just a piece of paper saying these are the rules. Why is he not letting me through? He's had the message, Nico, he's had the message. I felt like I really answered them the right way. I was just saying, you know, okay, well, I won't get, I won't block him if he, if he's coming by, but I'm not going to come off the gas and, and let him come by so he can gain more points in the championship than me. Because I feel like I've earned my way to this spot, you know, from dead last. So I plan on keeping it. I'm not slowing down for Nico. Get close and overtake, they can overtake. Did you feel very let down that day? I don't know what, what I, I'm. I'm a bit worried now to open like old wounds or something by saying something. I don't remember what my position was at the time, uh, but anyways, it's the thing of the past, and um, that's it. Rosberg's in. He's going to drop down the order. What a showdown this promises to be between Alonso, Hamilton, and Daniel Ricciardo. Hamilton holds the inner ground. Now Ricardo trying to go all the way around the outside. He's done it. He's done it. Oh, Ricardo's taken second place from Lewis Hamilton. And now he goes chasing after race leader Fernando Alonso. He's down the inside and he makes it look so simple. Daniel Ricardo has taken the lead of the Hungarian Grand Prix. We go on to the final lap. And Rothberg's going to try and get past his teammate. Down into turn two. Round the outside. This is where we saw Ricardo, but no, Hamilton squeezes him out. He says, you're not coming through on this last lap. A little racing driver slapped to the face there from Hamilton once again on Rosberg. Daniel Ricardo wins the Hungarian Grand Prix. Hamilton holds on for the final podium slot ahead of Nico Rosberg. As far as I'm aware, in my mind, I was racing him. Lewis Hamilton was given the order several times to let you pass and, and still didn't. I don't know. We have to, uh, we have to discuss that internally. It's, it would not make sense for me to speak about that now. By the time we got to Spa, do you think that both Lewis and Nico had got over that whole team order situation? No, I think actually the opposite. I think that grew in them. And um, it grew more in Nico because Nico felt that Lewis didn't respect what was being said, what was being agreed, and he felt that Lewis was having been too hard in turn two in Hungary. And when, when we came to Spa, you could feel there was tension. And then we got to the race, and there was more tension. I think I have a meeting now. <laughs> The two Mercedes up against each other. Rosberg makes a good start, but Hamilton on the outside makes a better one. Going into the lead, so that was great. Hamilton from Rosberg. Nico did a really good job on the first lap and had generally more uh, boost power down the back straight, so he towed me. Rosberg's got a clean run. Hamilton has to go defensive. There's quite a lot happening, actually, this season, to be honest, thinking about it. So what happened? Uh, I'm just trying to overtake. Rosberg's going to have a look at the outside, but it's tough to go around the outside. He's trying... Oh! He's punctured, he's punctured Hamilton. Nico hit me, Nico has hit me. That's the worst place possible for Hamilton to get a puncture. People were like, you know, you got to, you had to give him more space, but um, what you need to understand is when you're traveling at 200 miles an hour and you move to the inside of the circuit, the corner is so much tighter. So the line isn't the same as the line if you're on the outside. And so we both break really late, nice and deep. Nico obviously had to bail out because he wasn't going to get by. I had to sort of give way and just mis uh, misjudged it uh, and then anything could have happened you know normally my front wing goes flying but on this occasion only part of my front wing went flying and Lewis's tire uh, got a puncture. In comes Lewis Hamilton with that shredded left rear tire. Oh, damage. He's damaged the rear of the car as well. Cars all over the place. I've got nothing guys. I, the rear end is the rear end is so bad. I, Stop me, save my engine. And Ricardo wins the Belgian Grand Prix. Nico Rosberg finishes in second place. Absolutely unacceptable. Can you apportion blame? Well, I think it's pretty clear what happened out there. Uh, you don't, uh, you don't uh, try to overtake with the knife between your teeth. Is that how you say it? In lap number two, and then damage both cars.
strong words. Yeah, it was strong words, and, and we're not used to management being so open. I think most people felt it was clumsy of Nico Rosberg to try and pass around the outside, especially on Lewis Hamilton. But to have a team boss come out and confirm that, we're not used to it. Normally they do all that sort of stuff behind the scenes. I think but, that was wrong, Davis. Well, I, I accept your point of view on that, but I think from a fan's point of view, it was great because we got to see what they were thinking. And I think this is an extension of that, you know, just absolute honesty that we're used to from Nicky Lauda. Very simple. It is unacceptable for me that in the second lap, Nico hits Lewis. Very simple. Unacceptable. You try to make sure you mend it, and you mend it internally. You put a bond together, you put our arms around each other and say, let's never let this happen again. Yeah, but Lewis and Hamilton is not a man that can be contained. We've seen it through his McLaren career. But he didn't say it, it was he, Toto said it. Yeah, but Lewis came out and said, we've had a meeting, and Nico's just confirmed to me he did it deliberately. <laughs> our championship leader, ladies and gentlemen, Nico Rosberg. There was some booing from fans. That's a, that's a tough, uh, tough feeling. Um, to have people really go against me in such a way, you know, and really show their anger towards me, you know, and it took some time to get over. To Nico, I had a simple discussion. I mean, he argued, which I understand, that he needs to make a point against Luis, uh, because Luis is, is one of the best overtakers. He can pass people in places where you don't think you can get through. And I told Nico, there are some drivers, they take chances and they get away with it, and some don't. So Luis is an expert on this. So therefore, your try on the outside really made no sense. Eventually, after hearing everybody's opinion, I came to the conclusion then that it was, for the largest part, my, my responsibility. And so I apologized uh, for that to everybody. For sure, at that point, I'd already thought that I'd had the hardest weekends already. And that was the hardest weekend. I don't know why he hit me, but uh, I'm sure he'll leave here happy. You get to thinking that maybe it's just not uh, not my year, but you know I can't let that can't let that overtake everything. There's still seven races I'm going to push. I'm just going to give it everything I can for those next three races because that's all I can do. This is a team that is bred to win, and all of us this year have felt the scalding pain of not winning and that pain probably the greatest at Monza when in front of our home crowd, in front of our Tifosi, not only did we not perform well, but we had the ignominy of a DNF. And out a retirement for Alonso on home turf as well. It's really been like an Italian soap opera, hasn't it? So after three races, the team principal, Stefano Domenicali, he's out. They bring in Marco Mattiacci to replace him. Seven months later, Mattiacci out. And the president, Luca de Montezemolo, he's out. It seems though Fernando Alonso didn't get on at all with Marco Mattiacci. When he was first confronted with all that team personnel change, plus an engine that wasn't good enough, a chassis that clearly wasn't good enough, what must have been going through his mind to resign and go to a team that he actually left under a cloud, which was McLaren, and for him to be going back there is a massive surprise. Racing teammate, Vettel now will have the inside line for the next chicane. Does Ricardo try around the outside? He cuts back to the inside! He's got past his teammate. Sebastian Vettel could do nothing. We've talked about it so many times, about where Sebastian has come from, what he's able to do, the championships that he's won and then to have this young cub come and, and display the kind of talent. I mean, it was a double move, wasn't it? For me, it was, I, I was nearly dizzy watching this because it was such a great overtake. I think that was probably quite a defining moment for Sebastian. He was enormously frustrated after that. And it was at a time where I could see that he was very distracted. And it was obvious that something was at the back of his mind. And, uh, I think Ferrari, obviously, at that time, were, were courting him quite hard. And I think around Spa-Monza was uh, the time that he made his decision, right, I'm going to do something different for next year. He was, you know, he was actually physically in tears about it. Um, that it was like leaving home, but he decided to take on a new challenge at, uh, at Ferrari. Nico Rosberg leads, Lewis Hamilton in second. Those next races, I felt like I had a huge force with me. Now they will race to the flag. You know, it's a very intense race and battle between me and Nico, and, geez, if he didn't feel that force that was with me, which he did, obviously, then I'd be surprised. 
Hamilton has just gained a massive amount on Rosberg. Do not tell me the gap. Do not tell me the gap. That is the highest speed you ever get to and the biggest braking you ever get to in Monza with the lowest downforce. So it is difficult. I love this. This is a psychological battle. And I don't know, I just got it wrong in the crucial moment. Oh, He's got it. it. As a result of uh, Lewis putting pressure on, you know, and I had to go look for that extra pace. This is Hamilton's chance to take the lead of the Grand Prix. Oh, Hamilton's in front. Well, there's no doubt who has the psychological edge now. It is Lewis Hamilton. He has forced his teammate into a mistake. And Lewis Hamilton wins the Italian Grand Prix. What a result. Nico Rosberg. And he's not, and he's moving. not moving. Could be a pit lane start. It will surely be a pit lane start. He cannot get the car running. The only thing that is working on the dash is your gear shift paddles, OK? Well, he's had the lion's share of reliability this year. This could be a real opportunity for Hamilton. 22 points behind, 25 available for victory, of course. Yeah, that was a tough moment. I feel so helpless, you know, it's just my car that doesn't start. Lights out, away we go. Hamilton is leading this race. Rosberg is severely hampered. OK, let's park it. Stop, switch off. It's all over for Nico Rosberg here in Singapore. That was a tough moment to just, you know, see and, and lose such a, so many points in that day. Hamilton wins the Singapore Grand Prix. What a result for him on a day that he now takes the World Championship lead. That's when the momentum finally swung and gave him, gave him the advantage. Look at this, the gap's coming down. Hamilton closing on Rosberg. It's a great feeling chasing, especially when you know you're gaining. This is a definite duel between the two Mercedes drivers. I've always felt like racing is where my real strength lies, you know, being able to suss out what the other driver's going to do, plan ahead of what I plan to do. He's got the run. Rothberg's going to have to go defensive into the spray. Comes Hamilton, he's on the dry line. He sweeps around the outside. Lewis Hamilton takes the lead of the Japanese Grand Prix after hunting his rival down. That is bravery off the scale. Red flag, the race has been stopped. Lewis Hamilton will be declared as the race winner. He has beaten the man who took pole position, Nico Rosberg, here in Japan. Towards the end of the race, of course, tragic scenes, Adrian Suttle crashes. The recovery vehicle is there moving Adrian's car and Jules Bianchi comes around in the same place, comes off the track and hits that recovery vehicle. A lot of the drivers and a lot of the new teams they hadn't been around certainly as long as I have to have seen what kind of uh, effect this has on the paddock in general. And the drivers were absolutely shocked. And uh, it was a massive accident, horrific in fact. Jules is back in his own country in France. He's on road to recovery. It would probably be a long one, but uh, fingers crossed that we wish him every success. It was a shocking reminder of the dangers of Formula One. And it, it was enabling the paddock to really come together in the support of the Marussia team and for Jewel and his family. Lights out, away we go, and Hamilton gets away from pole position. Rosberg goes with him. Here comes Rosberg. Rosberg coming down the inside, trying to pass Lewis Hamilton. He looks up, he looks up. Just unnecessary, unnecessary mistake because it was my corner. But it really, yeah, just completely got me on it. It was unexpected for me to have that problem. And that's why it was such a huge cloud of smoke. Lewis Hamilton is going to win the Russian Grand Prix. Nico Rosberg finishes in second, and Mercedes have become the Constructors' Champions of 2014. The Mauricia Formula One team have been placed into administration. They'd already withdrawn from the weekend's United States Grand Prix, the second F1 team to withdraw after Caterham, who were also in administration. We go across the pond to America, two teams down. Well, I was critical of the time, and I was critical of Bernie in particular, that I believe that Formula One is a family. 
And if you have a family environment and a family structure, you've got to make sure you look after all members in that family, whether the rich ones at the top or the poorer ones at the bottom. I also call to question the split in the money as to why the first four or five teams get such a chunk off the top. I felt it was a very unfair playing field. And I feel that Formula One desperately needs those teams to be part of Formula One. It's looking good for Nico Rosberg here at Austin. Interestingly, in Lewis's main discipline on Saturdays, Nico dominated. And it's Nico Rosberg who has taken his ninth ball of 2014. On the Sundays, Lewis was faultless and his race craft was, um, was just brilliant. Hamilton having a go, Rosberg, he's down the inside. Oh, he's made the move. He squeezes his teammate out. Hamilton takes the lead at the US Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton wins and it's given him a further championship lead. The following week we're in Brazil and you have to look at the way the pressure is swinging. Lewis seems to be pushing forward, but then Nico in Brazil seems to take charge of everything. Well, credit actually to Nico Rosberg, the way he handled the end of the season. You know, the pressure, if there was, seemed to inspire him. Rosberg coming in. If Hamilton can do a flying next lap, then he may have the chance to uh, get in front of Rosberg. Oh yeah. my goodness! Wow, Hamilton has push too hard. Nico Rosberg wins the Brazilian Grand Prix. He has fended off his teammate on this occasion after Hamilton made a rare mistake. In the battle for the championship, it will reduce the lead that Lewis Hamilton had, but he will still be the points leader going into the final round at Abu Dhabi. So we go into this title showdown, 17 points, the difference. Nico really needs to win the race, but he has to get a car in between himself and Lewis, because if Lewis comes second, he's won the championship. Going into Abu Dhabi, I knew that I only had to finish second, but what I wanted to do is to win. And so how do I go about it? It's not the same race as, as you normally have, but you have to approach it the same as you go into the weekend. Rosberg, a 140.4. Where's Hamilton? I'm not sure Hamilton's done enough. I don't think he has. No, 140.8. And Lewis Hamilton will start from second position. That's a big margin. Between these two, we very rarely see any kind of margin at that level. Nico dominated everything through practice, and Lewis was falling back a little bit. Going into Abu Dhabi, the double points could, could have potentially such an impact. So we needed to make sure that the car was reliable and that was, we concentrated so much on that that we wanted to avoid a sudden swing in the championship towards one or the other by a car DNFing. That day I was really calm. It's the calmest I've been all year. I don't know why. I felt really relaxed. I was like, this does not feel normal. So I was, I was worried about the fact that Maybe I'm not in the zone, because normally I have the butterflies and everything. It is the last race of the year. And that does make a difference. Because um, you can't say anymore, OK, well, you don't need to take, you know, you don't need to do this now, because you still have two races to go, you know? Today, Nico Rosberg goes into the biggest race of his life as he attempts to beat Lewis Hamilton to the title. Hamilton has been here before, though. It is the fourth time he's gone into a season finale with a shot at the title. And, of course, in 2008, he converted that chance. Now, he's on the threshold of becoming the first British driver in over 40 years to win multiple championships. All you're, all you're trying to do is make sure, firstly, you don't jump the start. You're trying to react to the lights as fast as possible, so for every millisecond, it's like half a metre or a metre at the end of the straight. The two title protagonists are ready to lock horns for the final time this year. I felt relaxed, I felt controlled. Had the best start ever. Hamilton's made a great start, a brilliant start from Lewis Hamilton, and he snatches the lead, and Rosberg gets into second place, but it is Hamilton who leads. What a start from Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton leads from his teammate Nico Rosberg. They are one and two, but not the way that Rosberg needs it. It's perfect for Hamilton at the moment. Long, long way to go in this race, of course. This is looking very strong at the moment for Lewis Hamilton. Rosberg can't keep up. Oh, oh that's 
massive lock-up. Rosberg's now dropped to seven seconds behind Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, very slow last lap. Three seconds slower. Does he have an issue? Strange lack of engine power out of turn 14. Losing engine power. Yeah, copy Nico, we can see it. Oh, what a shame if it goes this way. Anything I can do to keep it going, anything to do differently? We'll try, we're trying to solve it, Nico, at the moment, just keep pushing. OK, Nico, so at the moment, Urs has failed. He's going to be in so much trouble now, that's 160 horsepower that he no longer has available. OK, advise what's going on. The car switched off and now the throttle is all over the place. How tough was that for you? Very tough, because we let him down. Now, you could say that probably the race was lost at the start. Uh, with with Lewis going and it was clear that even f you know Lewis winning or even finishing second behind Nico wouldn't have changed the outcome of the championship so that is the only support I can give myself and the team um, of justification the way he handled the situation was very professional but I guess it was pretty clear that he was very upset himself just get me in the top six or five or whatever it is as safely as possible Then for me, I, I wasn't nervous about my car, but I was like, okay, please, <laughs> rubbing the car, you know, hoping that, because, you know, she sounds perfect, she sounds fine, but it happens without you even having any warning. What else can I do to look after the car? We're just reviewing whether we need to turn the car off again, you let us know. I started missing all the curves, so my, my time dropped off quite uh, a lot, you know, by around a second and a half or something. So then I think they started to panic because I didn't really tell them that I was slowing down that much. So Massa, 46.8 last lap, 46.8. Need to pick pace up a little bit. I'm not racing Massa anymore. Okay, copy that, Lewis. How am I looking for that position finish that I need in case Lewis drops out? Uh, it's not good at the moment, Nick. Not good at the moment. Well, what the hell does that mean? Should I, what do I need to do on pace? Just drive flat out. That's all you can do, Nick. And Rosberg's going slowly, very slowly. Yeah. It looks as though it could be all over. So, Nico, box, box, box. Too many problems with the car. Box, box, box. I would, I would like to go to the end. Stand by. We're happy for you to continue. That's great, actually. That, that is. is great for Rosberg. Finish the Grand Prix. He can walk away from this race. His head held high. Lewis, uh, Nico looks to not be a threat now. Nico's not a threat now, so we can fight for this. At that point, I was kind of like, well, I want to, I want to win. I want to do it. Hamilton's responded. He's a tenth quicker in the first sector, just sending a message that, well, look, you can try, but it's going to be in vain. You know, I've always dreamed of, of winning the World Championship, but winning the last race. He goes on to the final lap. The world title is heading his way. I can see the crowd starting to cheer in the corner of my eye. And I was like, keep yourself calm. I was like, oh my God, this is, I've gone the distance, like, this is it. I just couldn't believe it. And it came around the last corner and that was it. It came off the gas and I was like, wow. came across the line and I think it's more of a feeling of relief and just being incredibly grateful. There's just so many emotions coming through because you know it's been a long time and also even though I'd won a championship before and I've been in I'm in for one, it's still my childhood dream. for not letting or making the British public sweat. You are an absolute legend of all that, mate. Congratulations, Lewis. First Mercedes-Benz champion since Fangio. Uh, I, I can't really explain how much this means. It means even more than the, the first one. It feels like it's the first time, and uh, I'm just, I feel so blessed. The first one is always special, but the first one was special because, you know, I met Ron when I was 10, and I said I wanted to be world champion in this car, and then, 12 years later, I won the championship in his car. And then I had the big move, and everyone doubted me, and, and everyone doubted uh, 
I can't even remember a single person said a good thing about it or that, that it was the best thing for me. You know, I knew in my heart it was a good thing, but I just didn't, I could never have envisaged that it would be, I'd be winning the championship in the second year. Hi, Nico, it's Paddy. Sorry it didn't work out today, uh, but you drove like a champion all year. And uh, we come back next year and have another go. I have to say, when I saw Nico going up in the back of the podium, we congratulate Luis, this is real sportsmanship. Honestly, I had a heartbeat when I saw that because I've been through all the stress with the two drivers and that showed again what incredible teamwork we all have. And between the two guys, there was a lot of aggravation going on and then one, when one won and the other one lost, it's the most difficult time for a racing driver when you lose a championship. And then Nico went up there and congratulated him. I really had a lot of respect for it. Emotions, very disappointed. Um, then, uh, but all in all, you know, uh, Lewis deserved to win the championship today. Yeah, that's that's clear. Um, and what happened to me didn't have any didn't have any impact on that. You know, I mean, he was out there winning the race, and and um, so it, yeah, whatever my race didn't didn't change anything. All in all, yeah, he just did that little bit better job than me in in in, in this year, especially in the races. You know, just a tiny bit, which I need to find. He is probably the, the best, or he was the best on the grid this year, you know, and I was up against, up against him, came very close, so, um, yeah, pity it didn't work out, but uh, still, it's proud, I'm proud to be in this moment, you know, with the team, it's been a very special year. I think also he, as a personality, has developed throughout the seasons, and he has understood that it's not the last time he's going to have a, have a go on the championship. We... Thank you very much what you did now, because now I understand that you understand that he was better this year, so fight and next year it might be the other way around. I'm grateful that I have a teammate that's been fighting with me, uh, winning a championship from start to finish, uh, from pole position every race would not be really satisfying me. Really. I'm sure that together we, we push each other, you know, to each of us always go looking for that extra bit. And that's really raised both of our games uh, this year to a, to a high level. It's still unbelievable like to think that 15 years ago we'd be on holiday together, sitting at dinner thinking, um, oh, I imagine if one day we're going to be in the best F1 team, just fighting it out for those race wins and championships. That's uh, it's, it's quite amazing. Motorsport is, is very honest stopwatch and the stopwatch always tells the truth and whatever their approach was, whatever their personalities are, at the end they always ended up nearly at the same point. Clearly one won and the other one came second, but they were so equal, it was just a constant battle between the two of just beating the other one. The driver who won 11 races won the championship, the other one won five. So you could say that um, that was the reason why he won the championship. He is the best and was the best this year, no doubt, uh, dominating the whole season. But every year is different. You have to start all over again next year to try to do it again. It's a new fight. The thing that really stands out for me is he did it his way. It was the Lewis Hamilton way. What you see is what you get. And there's a contrast, this quiet, often searching for words man out of the car, and this steely determination, this absolute racer behind the wheel. And where I think he broke through and won this championship was not with his speed, but with his racing ability. That is what ruffled the feathers of Nico Rosberg, and that's what won Lewis Hamilton this title. And he joins this incredible club of, of British double world champions now, of just four drivers. Well, we, we, we all know who they are, the Jim Clark, Jackie Stewart, obviously Damon's dad, uh, and now himself. And I think that, more than anything, when he says that this was more important to him, I think it's more important because he joins a group of great, great British drivers. If you could summarise the season, sum it up in one sentence, how would you describe it? I really enjoyed the inter-team battle and to see the different personalities coming through and they are very different personalities so for me the human level was the aspect of the season I really enjoyed. For me I'm grateful that we had Mercedes and the wisdom that they had in getting Lewis to the team because I would have 
shudder to think what sort of a season we would have had had it not been for that inter-team battle because the world loved it. They got it because nothing like a fight, not just two drivers, but the fact that they're part of the same family, it's amazing, you know, you couldn't write it. Hollywood script, we had it all.